It's 2012! So that must mean the Mike Dunn Review's first review must be the review of last year, 2011. So here is Mike Dunn Review's top 11 of 2011. The first one on my list would be Thor, a Marvel comic adaptation. Um, going to be in the Avengers this summer, so it's just introducing us to the God of Thunder. Um, basically, God of Thunder, Thor, gets banished to, heaven, uh, to Earth from his, Earth, from his um, heavenly world, Asgard. Um, for being like up himself and very vain, so he finds humility while on earth and finds that he needs to protect people. Um, very like happy go lucky, very like camp. It was it was fun. It was a very fun film to watch. Um, enjoyable. It was um, just it was nice to see a comic book film that doesn't need to be uh, like gritty to be good, like The Dark Knight. Or it reminded me of Iron Man when that first came out. How it was like a nice refreshing uh, take on it. Um, all the cast were fantastic. Uh, Kenneth Branagh does a great job of directing, and I really look forward to the sequel and seeing Thor in the Avengers. Number ten is the uh, the first animation of two on this list. Disney's Tangled. Um, I was really impressed by Tangled. Uh, it made me laugh all the way through. Characters were fantastic. Um, the animation was really good as well, um, and it was just a really good Disney film. A lot of my friends said it was the best Disney film I've ever seen, and everyone that I've recommended it to us, loved it. Heartwarming, just makes you feel good and it's nice to see Disney doing well again. But now it would be quite an obscure entry from Norway, The Troll Hunter. Um, it's basically like a fake documentary following uh, this one guy who takes care of trolls, seeing as they are living, breathing creatures that live in Norway and the government's been hiding them. Um, very out there premise, but um, the film does really well. Um, the effects are really good, and it uses our knowledge and fables and uh, fairy tales of trolls to like show them in their like habitat, and it does a really good job. It makes you actually start believing that they're actually real. Really worth uh, finding out. Um, it's one of the best like thrillers this year. I promise the second animation on this list, Kung Fu Panda 2. I may get a lot of stick for having this on my list, but I absolutely adored it. Much better than the original. Um, had a very poignant storyline in some parts, uh, actually touched the heart in some parts as well. The 3D was actually worth it, can you imagine? And uh, the animation was really good, fight sequences and set pieces were really good, and yeah, I, I actually can't wait for the third one, I think it's the best franchise that DreamWorks do at the moment. Number seven on the list would be Red State, Kevin Smith's latest. Um, much different from his usual comedy fare. Um, Instead, it's uh, three teenagers trying to lose their virginity, get kidnapped by a religious cult, and pr the SWAT teams try and rescue them. Nothing goes to plan. Um, really energetic, really kinetic. It's f fantastically done. Um, Storyline is kind of basic, but he does really well with it. Um, twists and turns everywhere. Had my mouth open for most of it. Um, the ending was fantastic. And I can't wait to see if he does better than this with Hit Somebody, but I think that's his last film. Kevin Smith, please make more films like this. Next on the list of 2011 is The Girl with the Dragon Tattoo, the reinterpretation of the Swedish original, directed by David Fincher, starring Daniel Craig and Rooney Mara, all do a fantastic job. Um, Daniel Craig and Rooney Mara are investigating the disappearance of a uh, young girl, member of a rather rich industrial family. Nothing as it seems to get into a seedy and dark past. Um, Really well shot, really well done. Reminded me of Finch's earlier work of Zodiac and Seven rather than his latest social network and Benjamin Button. He's one of the best uh, directors at the moment. Fantastic. Um, music's fantastic by Trent Reznor as well. Um, everything was re really, really impressive in this film, including the opening titles. Best opening titles of 2011, right there. Fantastic. Do search it out. It is very 18 rated though, and some scenes do stick with you afterwards. Oof. But yeah, we're very, very worth it. A truly terrifying film in at number five, Don't Be Afraid of the Dark. I saw this film on my own in an empty screen. Do not do that. It will scare the living out of you. Um, Guy Pearce, Katie Holmes, their little girl, they move into this new house, or this old house even, um, but in the, ho in the house is the little teeth-eating creatures that... Um, want to take the girl away and make her one of their own. Ah, oh, terrifying. Um, Guillermo del Toro, the guy behind Hellboy and um, Pan's Labyrinth, uh, is doing this one fantastic. He, he, he's the master of suspense and horror in today's modern age. Um, oh, I can't even describe what <laughs> this film did to me. It ter truly terrified me. If you want one film to watch this year to scare you, it's this one. Really worth it. True Grit is my number four of this year. 
um, the remake of the 1950s John Wayne classic. Um, Jeff Bridges, Josh Brolin, uh, Matt Damon, Haley Steinfeld all star in this Coen Brothers film. Haley Steinfeld's dad gets killed by Josh Brolin, so she enlists the help of Matt Damon and Jeff Bridges to try and find him and bring him to justice. Really, really fantastic film. The Coen Brothers' first uh, foray into genre of terror, sorry, and they do it really well. Um, Jeff Bridges could star in a Go Compare advert, and I would absolutely love it. And he just takes the rest of the film up in him. He's just fantastic. Steinfeld does really well. Matt Damon does surprisingly well in the film that I didn't think he would do. Um, in an industry that's never-ending remakes, let's hope that it's more like this, because this is by far the, uh, the bar to set. Number three of 2011 would be 50-50, a comedy about cancer. Now, um, Joseph Gordon-Levitt finds out that he has a rare form of cancer and he has 50-50 chances of survival, and the film basically depicts um, him and his friends and his uh, girlfriend and his therapist and their relationships between the two while he's finding this news out. Um, I've had several fa family members deal with cancer in the past, and it really did hit home. You can tell that the uh, writers actually had cancer in the past, and it's really true to life. Um, don't be put off by the storyline. It's fun. It's a fantastically cast film with lots of like actual genuine friendships. We've seen the actors, you can tell. Um, and there's a story of self-confidence, uh, friendship, and finding help when all seems bleak. Very, very inspiring. Natalie Portman more than deserved her Best Actress Oscar this year for her performance in Black Swan, my second best film of the year. In it, she plays a ballerina who um, must tap into her inner desires to win the role of Swan Queen in uh, Swan Lake. Um, but under pressure from her mother, she taps into things that she didn't even know were in her mind and starts breaking down. Fantastic performances by all the cast. Direction was amazing by Aronofsky. Mesmerizing choreography, set pieces and twisted storyline. Um, absolute masterpiece of a film. Worth the hype, worth you seeking it out, especially for the guys for that one scene that we all know is in there. And my number one film this year, da, 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 da. The King's Speech. Ah, of course it was going to be. Um, won so many awards at the Oscars this year. Very worthy of it. True story of Prince Albert overcoming a stutter um, as he's about to become uh, King George the Sixth. Um, so he sees a speech for therapist played by Geoffrey Rush, and while his uh, wife, the Queen Mum, Helena Bonham Carter, dopes by. Um, Fantastic performances by both leads, and it's an educational and intriguing look into the royal life and the role of a king in today's society. Um, it's really, really well done. Not for the oldies, despite the fact that they're mostly the people who watched it. If you seek it out, you'll still enjoy it, I promise you. If you don't, I will refund you on your time watching this review, okay? Good stuff. That's the review of 2011. Here comes 2012. Dark Knight Rises, The Avengers other non-comic book related films. I hope you enjoy it as much as I will.